and we're back. Yes. Um, today we're gonna continue on the Moth Hawk, uh, Moth Hawk project because that's important. And so we're gonna continue draw. Yay! <laughs> I mean it. Obviously, this is uh, eh. You know, it has been a good day, a good weekend actually. So I'm gonna be doing this now. Um, let me check. So I'm gonna continue where we have left off. That is this spot right over there. So today we're gonna get this whole thing done. Now let me see if I put it on the right layer. Yes, I put it on the right layer. So I need to go to you there. First things first, full screen. Second, one, two, three, four, five. There you go. And let's turn this around. And of course now it doesn't work. Does it? I think it is. Image, rotate. Angle, yeah, no, right, not right. Hold on one sec. No, it's all them. No, it doesn't work. Then, cat, damn it. Uh, options, 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 options. I could do this without, but still, properties. No, rotate. Uh, hold on one sec. I'm just gonna be doing this again. Hold on. Eh, eh, piece of. Why is it always happening when I'm trying to do things right? It's so evil. So evil. I just wanted to start with something and then boom. Everything in, turns into smithereens. Uh. Let's see, so first things first, get that back here. Got the user manual, no, 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 nobody needs user manuals these days. Ah, uh, come on. Work. If it is not gonna be happening correctly, then well, uh, I'll be. Eh. Prop these now, I need to rotate this, so. Control A, Control yes. So. I need to put this on, and then I need to, no. no. Come on. Spook my doodles here. Oh uh, boy. Well, let me now continue with no. For you, uh, maybe we can do it now. No. I'm going for I'm gonna go for this. Maybe. Did I move it? No, I didn't move it. Alright. Congratulations. No, it doesn't work. So the key binding is bugged again. God damn it. I had it all installed rightfully so and now it's all again bugged. Ah, bugs. Uh, you always have. Hold on. No. Like that. Alright. Get that back up there. Alright. So, there is some bugs here now and then. Well, it happens, it happens, it happens. Well, let's continue then anyway with the, with the mildly problem that I need to change the ways of, you know, how I draw. First things first, get this thing back to normal size. There you go. I need to zoom in for this. That way I can actually draw better. It's so strange that normally, you know, when you finally figure out the key binding and then, you know, key binding doesn't work. It's actually quite strange that that happens, but, uh, you know. Uh, I can't you know, not do anything about it. 
I might not be, but you know, I'll find a way. Eventually. Yeah. I'll to put this on the small pen, so. Wait a minute. I can go to the move tool here, and then. Oh no. What does this do? Oh no, that does that. Okay. Well, I found something new. That's a funny tool that I'm not going to be using right now. Of course, the original tool is not installed on this. Great. Don't need those tools. Don't need them. Not yet, at least. So apparently there is a move tool to move a nose to the right position or, you know, merge positions. Quite funny that th that it exists, but uh, you know. So, um, yeah, it happens, you know, it happens, it happens. Also, my hand is already itchy because I have been playing way too much video games today. Holy hell. But, you know, it happens. So I'm going to be not doing too much. I'm not going to put too much pressure on it. I'm probably going to be doing no video games tonight, sadly. That's a sad life. Because I don't want to overwork my... I don't want to overwork my hand. So to speak. Because if I overwork my hand, then that's going to be even worse. So I'm just going to be doing casually working around this. Yeah. My hand is so rusty. And I'm not doing anything yet right now. I'm just drawing. And I can already feel the pressure of my thumb working on my hand. Maybe I should change that from hands. Yeah, it's gonna be different. Though that this is so difficult. Working with a different hand is like oh. Well it's the best way to relax. It's the best way to change up uh to make sure my hand is rested. So yeah. I'm gonna be switching back. So, um, right, nothing works right now, that's great. So my hand is in a big of a trouble, because I played too many video games today. Well, it happens, that's the problem, it happens. So, what would be the proper exercise here? Probably stretching my thumb, because that's the one that's actually, uh, that's actually fatigued, but you know, you need your thumb to draw. That's the problem. Well, I could not draw with my thumb if I want to, but then you know, it's gonna be like this. So I have less movement on. I have less control over it. I think that's the proper action right now. Feels very, very painful. It's like, you know, you have used your thumb too many times, pressing a button or clicking too much. I have been using my thumb intensely because I was building something, a ship that actually went sinking in a type of game, but, you know, that's the fun part, like, not everything works as you can think it should work. So, um... To compensate for this bullshit, I'm gonna try to do my very best upon you know drawing.
but will not be the best of trying because I'm how many in trouble. Well, I switched back to my hand, so now it's supposed to be. I think it is gone. It's not gone anymore. I'm so sad. Because that means that I cannot push my drawing today. Which can eventually lead to some problems, which I don't want to have happening. That sucks if I am not be able to draw correctly, as it's supposed to be going. Well, you know, for the next time, like, maybe you should not, maybe you should not game too much. Or maybe you're not supposed to use your thumb too much intensely. I think that's the problem. I use my mouth. I use my hand too much. The mouse is not actually one of. I have used my mouse way too. I have my use my mouse wrong. I think because that this is the only this is the only explanation why my hand is now so sore. Well, it's not even hand. It's just the thumb that actually feels painful. So it's like there is a muscle inside that has been full of um, milk acid. I think that's the word. I don't know. It's it's not. That's the little. That's a little. Ten, that's a li literal literal uh, translation from my point of view. So I'll call it milk acid. Yeah, let's go for that. It's when the muscles the muscles produce acid, which causes the um, uh, muscles to become stiff. This all uh, this normally happens when you use your muscles too much. So the only way to uh, get it out is by doing general exercises, which I have no clue which one I need to use for my thumb, because you know it is very difficult to understand my thumb because I have never, never, never had this. I think it is because I used too much the mouse in the wrong position. Because you know you you click too much times or click too many times, but you know it happens. It happens. It happens. I think it has to do with that. But you know to make sure that I'm not putting myself on the limit, I'll make sure that I only do this time only the wing, and then you know. I'll start to do something else in a set. Because holy hell, this is bullshit. It's very annoying that you know you have this. You try to do everything correctly, and then you know you realize, like, oh wait, my hand is saw. That's not good. I haven't used my hand. I have not used my hand that intensely. I think today, but uh, thinking of the other days, I have used it. Uh, I think I did overdo myself for one day. Oh well, you know. Now I know which which ways are the gaming limit. You know, like hmm, it's like that much of hours. That's much hours before your hand is gonna be collapsing to to the ground before you're ruining it everything. Well, you know. I'm not doing anything intense here. I'm just doing my job. I could grab some water, maybe that will fix it as well. But just good, relaxing. I think next tomorrow it will be gone because of um, because if I'm doing it now, it means that tomorrow it will be gone if I'm not doing this too much. Let me see. So yeah, um, it happens. It happens. Uh, so we're gonna continue from on here to there. Yeah, I have been. I have placed my thumb. I have not placed my thumb correctly when working on the boat. 
on uh, on an unflutterable boat in a game. God damn it! <sighs> well, this happens, you know. It happens that you fail to realize that you're you you have realized you fail to realize you did the gaming on the wrong in a wrong position, which now actually over uh, which now actually over exhausts your uh, hand, which then causes you to take it slowly or else or well don't do complicated moves with your with your hand otherwise you know you get really rough on that part so yeah um, it happens it happens it happens it happens don't want to be complaining about it but I have to complain about it because I feel it so now and then you know when I'm doing this this is not that intense because it's always the same motion. It's always the same repeat. But you you feel it, so you know that that's the thing. Um, the main idea here is that um, I'm just trying to do my very best upon finishing this part, and then I will take my rest upon it because otherwise I will not be able to do it anymore. So I need to know when I need to quit. And so far, I know that it's. I know that it feels really bad, looks really bad, but you know, no, that's that's not a very good drawing. But there you go. I just gonna be doing this very. Uh, there it is. There it is. There I can see my muscle being tense. Look at that. So yeah, my hand is a little bit swollen up by the amount of you know acid inside of the inside of the muscles that could not be released when I was playing video games today. Ah, shoot. Shoot 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 shoot. It's honestly my mistake that I did it, but you know it happens, it happens, it happens. If you want to play intense, you know, sometimes when you play too intense because you don't realize what's going on, you know you lose yourself and then you realize that you made a mistake. One of the mistakes was li listening to the pain, but the pain was absorbed by uh, how do you say that one? Energy bursts? Probably. Adrenaline. Yes, there you go, adrenaline. So, because the pain was absorbed by adrenaline, uh, you are unable to realize that you are problem that you have a problem which happens because you have a problem because you put your hand in the wrong position or your thumb in the wrong position when you were uh, using the mouse which happens because you know the motions and the um, motions with the mouse sometimes go wrong and now there is an empty now is there a, now is there a, now your your uh Muscles are very stiff. Yeah, there it goes. Your muscles are stiff as, as stiff as rubber. You think that rubber is really elastic? Well, it's also very stiff because you cannot break it. It's like you cannot stretch it out. You cannot stretch it out if you are, uh, if you put it inside of a cold freezer. So yeah, when you put it inside of a cold freezer, then you know. That's the amount of stiffness I have now on my tongue. It's like very slow. I'm trying to, you know, use a use my hand, do some couple of motions to get a loose, just to um, remove some of the acids to the blood inside of the hand because that's what I need to do. So technically, I need to move up my mouth, my tongue. Then grab it, press it, and then continue drawing. So every single time I'm doing this, you know, I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up with my motion of knowing that I need to do, uh, remove the acid that has been created by the uh, by the muscles itself. Because otherwise, you know, you're gonna have cramps, and if you have cramps, oh, you are not gonna be likable. Rams are the worst kind of things you can have. I had it once when I tried to uh, when I tried to sprint, 
and if I'm normally sprinting, I'm sprinting very energe energetic. So yeah, cramps are not fun to play around with because then you are on an immediately hold and you cannot do anything about it. You cannot do anything with it because you know your hand is too tired, your uh, la or your leg is too tired, and well, you need to quit. That's the idea. That is always the idea. Let me just take a look. Eh, it's all the same. It's decent enough. I guess I'm keeping on. I'm trying to keep my um, feathers from getting to the right position here. So I'm trying to keep on with the position without changing any courses because I cannot press this button right here. I am not able to press this button. Because I need to put here this is this color selection, which is strange. But if I'm now going to I cannot select properly. So there is no um the shortcut is not registered. Which is strange because normally it's supposed to be registered in that one on that one shortcut. Which happens. Which happens, you know. Bugs exist. Bugs always exist. They're nasty, but they are doable to deal with. I deal. I dealt with it. Oh, hey, blue. I dealt with this. I dealt with bugs. Ugh. Very sneaky bug this one. Because it doesn't say anything. It says like rotate. But if I'm now going to the options, it should not be there. Like options. Frame shortcuts right there, you know. Oh. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. There it is. So it's under the view section, and then I need to press control on it. So, hold on. Now I need to press this, and now I need to press this. I can't. Wait, is it because I selected the wrong key binding? Oh, hey, hey, space junk. Ah, ah, ah! Mmm! I have my different settings on my keyboard because, of course, of course, it switched to back. Oh God, that's why is? Oh God, that that's scary. That was scary. That was way too scary for me. Oh no! So yeah, um, I did it. I fixed it. I fixed my PC. I fixed the key binding issue. What a surprise. I didn't know that it was a surprise there, but hey, you know, it's a surprise nonetheless, a very helpful one because now I now I don't feel the pressure of my thumb because I changed the direction which I'm using. So nice for me. Nice going me. Very well for me then. So yeah, um, I'm trying to do my very best upon this and now I can actually move forward because I don't have to deal with any bloody damn pain and cramps and illegal movement. Well, that's good. No illegal movement here. Well, so helpful that everything is working now fine. That also means that I can now work in straight lines instead of relying on my sense of how to put directions in because I'm not freestyling. First I had to deal with, you know, this. So, this is way easier. Also, I need to make sure that I have this one a little bit more darkened. Oh well. This relieves a lot of pressure on the thumb. Holy hell, that is visible. That's like visibly really helpful. And that's one of the things that happens, you know, because you are now putting your thumb to rest, you can then continue upon the right angle, which, you know, is not the other one. The other one was a very difficult angle, which tires tires your thumb really quickly if you have gamed every if you have gamed for a long time before you even went to drawing. 
because you know you like gaming and you always like to play game video games then well congratulations you have a little bit of a trouble when you're trying to then draw at the end of the day well it's not the end of the day it's just you know evening oh well but yeah I realize that maybe I should maybe I should take a more rest upon you know gaming but eh, gaming is fun so much fun and so is drawing but uh, you know cannot have both not both most of them because they all both require heavy 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 things from muscles but you know I like to play video games and then draw so probably gonna put some uh, less effort in gaming then because you know I like drawing more than gaming technically speaking and I like to continue this work so yeah um, I'm gonna be continuing on this on this part so allow me to just continue do 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 also I came to notice that um, I figured out that uh, that killer whales were actually a subtype of dolphins which I was quite surprised upon because of the name whales but you know I always thought they were from the whale family not from the dolphin family but if you looked at the skin I think that would explain why they are actually dolphin family because you know they have better brains and they're smart and they also have smooth skin which uh, both families have but eh, I think I think it is because of the brain capabilities that they are considered on the same species I don't know but that's it or it is the both on the head of the of the creature you know where they breathe air that part that that's why they are so but oh well killer will uh, killer whales are very nice to look at also sperm whales are also very nice to look at because um, if you have ever seen a skeleton of them it's really strange because you think like oh well every whale is just the same well no sperm whales actually have teeth and they hunt uh, in the deep sea a uh, giant octopus they, hu they hunt those things and they use sonar to um, figure out their position and then kill them which is quite cool which is quite cool if I may say so myself then you also have uh, which is also a very cool fish to look at I think the electric eel is one of them definitely not from the beauty aspect definitely not because electric eels are very strange looking also people always uh, in cartoons actually look at electric eels like they are uh, moral eels with electricity which they aren't electric eels are almost blind they cannot uh, sense things well they can sense things by electrical medical fields they are almost blind so they rely on their electric field to detect prey and then kill it they also are night hunters which is also quite fascinating about it and they produce as much electricity to knock out a horse they can technically kill a human if they are close to it so you technically get fried to death if you are in the considered area which is quite scary I'll tell you that you don't want to swim and you don't want to you know try to find a way to get your horse out of the mu muddy water because you know it got stuck under a on our in a mud pool and then you know you try to pull him out and then a mo and then an electric eel comes in and just zapped and the horse and the horse goes in has a heart in uh, has a heart failure and you just die because you're in the in the same area yeah electricity and water does not go along that's why it's such an effective hunter because you know it just fries the living shit out of a out of a out of a 
out of a fish and just kills it outright. And then just eats it happily ever after. Which is quite fascinating about it. Then also moral, moral eels are also very cool looking. The way they look, the way they look, the way they swim, but also the way they have their autonomy. They have actually, a, they have an, they have an additional jawline. They have an additional jaw they use. They have the first jaw, which then bites, and then the second jaw uh, comes out of out of the first one and nibbles away. It's like you know, uh, like a surprise, you know. It has two, a second set of jaws, which then chumps away the flesh of the fish. Which is quite fascinating, because, you know, there are not a lot of species that have actually have a second jaw. Which is the thing. Why that thing is so fascinating. Because, you know, no existing creature has a second jaw, if I'm correct. From the fish kingdom. I think. Yeah, I think so. Because of the amount of things. That's not a very fun surprise. Yeah, um, careful though, those things bite. So, don't ever try to put your finger in one of the moral eels. You will lose a finger. Definitely. Then you also have like octopuses, which have a parrot beak, which is very deadly because that's where the poison lies. That's where the paralyzing poison lies, which then, if you get bitten by it, you know you uh, turn up uh, a little bit stunned at the moment. <laughs> now white canvas. Reset, re reset canvas rotation. Thank you. So there it is. Um, it's a little bit different than the other part, but oh well. It's a little bit different than the other part because this part is actually less. Uh, do I really need to redo this? Yes, I need to redo this. The main problem here is that. Um, this part over here doesn't add up. This this doesn't add up. Because it's too tiny. These things are too tiny considered to them. Ah shoot. Well, I'm gonna be saving this first before I'm gonna be putting anything else. You do have me wanted to draw more underwater friends though. Well, I can draw on the water friends as well, so that's that is also a very damn fun thing to do when we have more people. Also, on the water things are very fun to doodle, so don't worry about that part. I like to draw things like fish, piranhas, whatever. They're very fun, and don't forget seahorses. They're also very fun to look at. Right, so. This is gonna be all there. Now I'm gonna be changing up again. Now I'm gonna go rightfully so. So we're gonna go again on control and then oh wait. Control and then turn around a little bit more. There you go. And done. So now we can continue on this part. Because holy hell, it's annoying if, you know... So yeah. There it goes. Much better. I was wondering when that, you know, when I made a mistake. But you know, now I can see what the mistake was. 
Sometimes you have to redo things because you know otherwise it won't make any sense when you try to draw. So sometimes you can just erase the problems that have been caused. Yeah. So yeah. Most problems are easily solved, so not very. I'm not gonna be very. Um, I'm gonna be very easy on this. Uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, let's see. So, how big are they? They're as big as that. All right, good. So what I'm gonna try to do is getting to that point of view where you know. They are almost the same size, which then has a better transition between the parts, because that's the problem that I was facing, which suck. One second, I need to get some water. Be right back. So, I'm back. Uh, I was a little bit thirsty right now. All that talk of water. Oh. Uh, it's a very thirsty kind of sea. Don't drink the sea though, it's very salty, so you probably end up dead if you drink now. But it is the sea nonetheless. It's beautiful, it's blue. Magnificent. Lovely blue ocean. Or if you want to go uh, underwater and you're gonna go near the volcano side, it has a blue, a red kind of feeling to it. Which also has a different ecosystem. Lots of reef sharks. Like the hammerhead. Which is specialized in finding uh, critters under the sea. Well, under the sand, actually, not under the sea, but. It's a very, very, uh, very cool mechanic that actually an, a shark has a has a wider point of uh, wider range than the other sharks has with his electric receptors, because the uh, wedge shape, the hammer shape, actually increases his keep, uh, uh, his electric magnetic field, which is quite uh, that's why it's so strangely evolved. And because of his wider point of view, it can detect critters on the sand, it can detect creatures from miles away, so it is easy to spot an enemy, or spot a predator and then, you know, eat it. Or if you see, well, if you see a little critter, you can eat it faster, or run away if you see a big giant, big giant shark coming ahead, heading your way, you know, because you can see it. Also, sharks migrate towards coral reefs very often, which is quite cool because, you know, they like to eat fish, and coral reefs always provide a lot of fish. And because they are the biggest of the fish, or the biggest of the coral sharks, they are the ones that are calling the shots, if I may say so myself. So, if a, bo if a shark comes in and be, be like, hmm. Well, that's a problem, because he will not get the food, because, you know, some sharks bully each other to get the food rightfully. So why would you do all the work if you just can snatch it out of somebody else's hands? It's very eco-friendly. You get, you get food, you don't have to do anything about it, and you get energy from it. By the way, one of the sharks that is the most scary shark is the shark that comes, in, eh, that comes into rivers. I don't know if you know that shark, but it's called the bull shark. It can technically go into the salt. It can actually go into salt uh, from salt to um, to salt to fresh water. 
Which is a dick move because you know normal sharks cannot go into fresh water. So if you ever see a shark inside of your rivers, you're probably gonna be fighting all of a bloody damn bull shark instead, and those things are heavily aggressive. The Amazon has that problem, so that's also a point why you should not go into a bloody damn Amazon river to, you know, skinny dip, because, you know, one thing, crocodiles, second thing, bloody damn bull sharks. And those things are bullshit, I gotta tell you. They are the ones they are the ones that are like heavily aggressive, tear up every single thing they have. And because the Amazon River provides a lot of food, because you know capybaras are there, jaguars that go swimming, you know, they don't return. Crocodiles that live there. Well Bull Shark eats crocodiles, of course. Nom 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 nom. So yeah, uh bull sharks, very spooky things. Very spooky. And because they can actually make their own salt, they don't die in fresh water, which is a dick move. Because not a lot of fish can do that. So yeah, if the if if the if the waters in the in the in the salty seas are are a little bit getting overcrowded, you know, they just go into the freshwater zones and be like, oh well, now this is my territory, and I don't have any competitors. Because, you know, they are the head predators of the sea. So they are also the head predators of the, so uh, of the well, of the fresh sea. Not from the salt sea, but fresh sea. They can grow like lengths of six, if I'm correct. Yeah. River monsters are very cool to look at that series. That's so much fun. So, informa informa uh, very lot of information. Like, um, one day they were d dealing with piranhas. Well, normally piranhas won't attack humans. So, they were wondering, like, how the hell are piranhas actually doing, having so much problem, uh, causing so much problems and killing people? So, they were looking for, like, clues and evidence, like, what the hell triggers a piranha to attack anything on sight? So what turns out they were starving. Well, um, how does how how do piranhas starve? Well, apparently there was some, such a thing as a, a fish that could breathe air. The imp, imp piranha, if I'm correct, if I'm spelling that one correct, it was a fish that could actually breathe air. It was a scaly fish that could breathe air, and eats and eats other fish. This fish could walk on uh, uh, could walk on land to go to the next place. The problem with the imperana is that it is a very sneaky bastard because you know it's a it's a hunter that that sucks the enemy into into his jaws and then eats it. And well, piranhas are well known for their bite, but you know, the Imperana was actually contesting with the Piranhas, and the imp Imperana was like, Well, there is no food left here, let's get the hell out of here. So yeah, he could just skibby scoobity scoop to the next river. So yeah, a very spooky thing, because, you know, it's an Imperana, and it can walk on land. It's also one of the invasive species in the... Uh, I, no, 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 wait. No, 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 it's not an invasive species. That's a snake, that's a snake head, if I'm correct. Yeah, the snakehead is one of the invasive species which causes a lot of troubles in the USA because you know it's one of the main pre it's one of the head predators which eats things. It normally comes from Southeast Asia, so yeah, invasive species are a pain in the ass to deal with because you know they don't have natural predators, and if you don't have natural predators. You grow, and if you grow, you eat the rest of the whole damn the whole damn thing because you know you are not gonna get satisfied. A lot of creatures do that, and what happens if your food is low? Well, you're just gonna be skibbity skibbity going to the next river or to the next pool. So that's what the invasive species can do because it can walk on land. It's one of those fish that can walk on land. It's evasive. What? And now you can see like oh. Because a fish can walk on land, that means it's very good. Yes, because that's what fish do. If a fish can walk on land, it means it's a very spooky fish because it can actually contest with other with other things. 
It it doesn't go it doesn't go it doesn't grow hungry from you know destroying a whole damn ecosystem because you know it just can walk to a second pool a pool full of fish and that's why it's so scary because well, that's why it's a fish with lungs or fish that can breathe air and move through land are very scary to deal with because they are very evasive they they call they cause a lot of problems they cause a lot of problems in the current situation they cause a lot of problems after they are done because they leave nothing behind they're just gonna be walking to the next part and then they eat every shit they eat everything again that's why bull sharks are so superior and that's why bull sharks are scary because you know they eat a lot and once their hunger and uh, the mating season comes they go away they go back from the amazon back to the to the galactic ocean to uh, to uh, well reproduce the invasive species however don't do that they just walk endlessly until they find a mate because that's what longfish do longfish oh well not longfish i mean ah uh, so difficult their gills are designed to breed air but they're not considered lungfish because they don't they don't have lungs. The only lungfish that is a lungfish is the lungfish and the impera. The impera is also a lungfish because it is uh, because it has lungs. But the other one, the snake hat, the snake hat does not have lungs. He just designed his gills to breathe air, which is quite impressive. Don't get me wrong in that one. That's quite impressive to have a fish that can breathe air because of the ab ability of you know because normally gills don't are not designed to breathe air they're only designed to absorb water that's why frogs actually have gills and uh have gills and lungs if I'm correct they because of they keep their gills when the transformation is complete I don't know if that's sh for sure but I know that they can. I know that they can absorb oxygen through, uh, through their skin. I know that they can ab absorb oxygen through the lungs. I can, and I don't know if they have still gills, but uh, one of the things, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's very impressive that you know those species exist. Just species that are so well adapted that you know nothing can beat them in 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 in, in doing anything else than that so let me just take a look at this that looks way better there you go that's that's much better that's that's way better now now I need to remove this this part right there not with not with a big brush but that that part right there and the more you learn about you know the more you learn about biology, the, the better you are, because, you know, it's fun. It's fun to watch biology happening. It's fun to see ev evolution at its finest. It's sadly that the evolution at its finest is very scary, because, you know, it, it can really ruin somebody's place. It can really ruin somebody's place. You have a lovely home? Well, too bad. Something comes into your home and wrecks it and then you know you have nothing left that's exactly what evasive species do I think also the snakes are evasive if I'm, cor if I'm correct the big giant pythons but oh well that's a problem for another day definitely so save again so there you go we have now completed this part of the wing so now we have Now the big question is like, should I continue with the set with the third? Should I continue with the third wing, like you know, the third wing here, or should I start with the body first to see uh, what to do with it? But I think making this making the third wing as well uh, gives me more opportun opportunity to shape the body next time. So. I think I will focus on that part. So I will start with making the new, you know, the new wing here, this one. And then once that's done, 
I am a fully able to then, you know, shape the body the way I want it. So yeah, um, it's 50 minutes in, so uh, I will call it here today. I will call it again for today, and we now know what we're gonna do next next day and uh, next day. So I know what I'm gonna do to today. But, oh well, I'm gonna do tomorrow. So I'm very happy upon that. Um. Uh, thank you everybody for watching, and uh, I hope I'll see you all next time. And until then. I wish you a great day and good luck whatever you were doing and until then, bye!